Okay, this is interesting, but it has nothing to do with the rest of the video. So I'm watching the replay of the Dubai Fitness Championships, which is one of the sanctioned CrossFit fitness events. And I remember I was watching it over the weekend. I had my laptop sitting beside me, and I remember thinking, it sounds funny. It sounds out of phase. And then I came down to the studio and was watching a replay, and look what happens when I take what I'm listening to and hit the mono button on my central station. Just, just listen. I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is hit the mono button. Listen to what happens. Hands, rope climb, events in the regional competition. And he did great. Do you get what happened? So everything we listen to on YouTube is in stereo usually, meaning there's a left channel and a right channel. For some reason, the way they had things wired over there in Dubai, the one of these two, the phase or the polarity got flipped. What happens when you take two identical signals and flip the polarity? They cancel each other out, causing silence. So if you go look in the comments, people are saying, I have no audio, I have no audio. Because if you're listening on a single speaker and the speaker works in the way of just summing left and right together to give you sound, then they left and right cancel each other out, causing no sound to come out of the speaker. It was, it was probably a cable that was wired out of phase. They probably had no clue. On headphones, it maybe doesn't sound as weird. Let's say you get a gig running sound at the Dubai Fitness Championship. Just give a quick listen. And if it sounds funny and kind of sideways, might be out of phase, you might want to fix that. Okay, now I want to talk about the real purpose of this video. And it's a simple piece of advice. You need to stop shooting yourself. Okay, here's what, I'm, I'm not old enough to have a YouTube, they, there should be a maturity test that you have to take before they give you a YouTube channel. What am I talking about? I am the king of this. As people who do creative work, writing songs, recording songs, mixing songs, doing things that require us to put ourselves into it, there is an element, at least for a lot of us, if not all of us, of self-criticism. And it, there's really no way around it. Some of that's really good. The fact that I listen to myself sing a vocal take and say, that's not very good, I can do better. That's a good thing, right? If, if we didn't have that, we'd be that guy on American Idol who can't sing at all and no one has ever told him. Look up to the skies and but where a healthy, constructive self-awareness goes wrong is when you start using the word should too much. I've made it a point in the last couple of weeks to stop myself whenever I start to say the word should. Like, I should be doing that. Oh, I should have done that. I should be better at this by now. Maybe you do that as well. Maybe you say things like, I should be able to make my mixes sound better. I should be able to release this music. I should have made more music by now. Um, I've been doing this for five years, 10 years, three years, 12 years, and I should be a lot better than I am. Um, I really should release some music. I really should get down to the studio. I really should play my guitar more. These are all good things, but when you slap that should on top of it, it carries this just this shame thing that is really not helpful and it puts you in a place of feeling obligated to do the thing instead of being a place of having a desire and really wanting to do the thing. If you haven't read my new guide, the 10 day EP formula, in there one of the things it has is a couple of questions to ask yourself and one of those is simply what do you want? Do you want to release an EP. If you don't, that's fine. This just isn't for you. But if you find yourself saying, I really should release an EP, flip that around. Instead of saying, I should, which implies that you, you are a disappointment and you haven't done it yet and you're kind of kicking yourself, instead of that, say, I really want to release an EP. I'm going to release an EP. What I would really love to do in 2019 is release an EP. It's a subtle but powerful difference because Shame can be a motivator, but it's a crappy motivator. Desire, on the other hand, is powerful. If I say I should make better YouTube videos, that tends to evoke a lot of fear in me. It makes me think, oh crap, I've not been making good YouTube videos. And it makes me less likely to really put forth the effort and to try it because it feels like I'm already starting with the deck stacked against me. On the other hand, if I say I really want to make incredible YouTube videos this year, 
that's a completely, completely, takes me to a completely different place emotionally and actually gets me excited and makes me go into a place where I want to make plans and move forward and get that momentum going. Whereas when I say should, it just becomes this, ah, I guess I, sh I guess I should, and there's just all this fear around it. If that resonates with you, leave a comment below and let me know. Also, if you want to release an EP in 2019, I'm gonna do it, I would love for you to join me. I've got a new course coming out where I'm gonna take you through that process and we're gonna do it together. Uh, that's all, I'll tell you all about that next week. Uh, but for now, I've put together a little guide that'll give you a little taste of what's to come. And it's called the 10 Day EP Formula, where I talk you through how I'm gonna go about start to finish doing an EP, five song EP in just 10 days. Go check it out at homestudiocorner.com slash formula and stop shooting yourself. Some